Hello there! My name is Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares. And today I'm going to make a small overworld map using a program called Pixel Edit, which is a pixel art software with a focus on making tile sets. And I've had it on my computer for a while, but I haven't really used it all that much, so I thought I'd dust it off and just try something that's a little bit different. To get started, I'm going to create a new document, and you can choose a canvas size based on how many tiles you want in the design, as well as the dimensions of the individual tiles themselves. For mine, I'm going to use a tile size of 8x8 eight eight pixels, and my canvas is going to be 32 tiles wide by 30 tiles tall, which will give an overall canvas size of 256 by 240 pixels. And I chose that because it's the resolution of the NES. In fact, the NES color palette itself comes baked into this program as one of the preset palette options, which is pretty cool. Um, they've also got other gaming palettes like the Game Boy and the Commodore 64. Uh, but for my work today, I'm going to use this preset palette called Tasty Pastels, just because it looks like a good amount of variety and harmony, and it's pretty mellow on the eyes too. First thing I'm doing is making a little 8x8 tile of a road, just by drawing it within one tile of the grid here. And then by using the Tile Placer tool, I can control click to add that design to my tile bank, which will then allow me to paint that same tile across the canvas. And you can also rotate the tile, which is how I got the vertical version of it here. Similarly, when you're working out uh, something like a corner design, you can either rotate or flip the tile just to fill in the other orientations that you might need. The next tile set here is going to be some water surrounded by land. And I've made sure to make the middle tile of that grid as just entirely water, and then the other tiles are the bordering pieces of land. That way I can tile out and repeat the water tile to whatever size I might need, and all that'll be left to do is to surround it by the land tiles. Of course, when you use this to make a randomly shaped lake or something, uh, you realize that certain changes in direction will require their own kinds of tiles that the original set didn't account for. So it's important with a design like this to also create the inside corners, um, which can basically be constructed by creating another tile set, but with the opposite design elements. So here I'm making a complementary tile set with land in the middle that's surrounded by water. And then I can use these inside corner pieces in combination with the original set of tiles to create different sizes and shapes of land and water all within that 8x8 scheme. So what am I going to do with all these tiles? Uh, well, I don't really know. Or at least I didn't quite know what the direction was at this stage in the artwork. I just knew I wanted a bit of exercise building out some tile sets like this. And like I mentioned, I also wanted to play around with this program specifically, uh, since I've had it for a while, but haven't really sat down to make something complete yet. So I started by collecting together a few repeatable tile designs, and then I'd figure I'd throw them all together into a map once I had enough unique pieces to work with. And at this point, the position of everything within the canvas is essentially just for the purpose of working out the tile designs. So this isn't necessarily where everything's gonna be for the final image. Uh, in fact, I wiped the entire canvas clean before tiling the final map, uh, but we'll get to that in a bit. So after getting a few of those repeatable elements handled, I figured it'd be good to have a couple unique landmarks across the map. This one here is a small city design that I'm working on, for which I'm using a typical top-down perspective that'll show the top and the front face of the buildings. To get that kind of distinction, I've used a lighter shade for the top and a medium shade for the front, and then in some cases, I've used the brightest color as a highlight edge to separate them. I've also worked the idea of this lighting scheme into the colored outline of the building, where I've tried to use a lighter outline color on the top and a darker outline color along the front side, all within this sort of peachy red hierarchy of that color palette. Up close, it might not feel like it makes too much of a difference either way, uh, but from a distance, it'll help keep those top and front faces distinguished from one another while also giving kind of a vibrant but soft quality from those pastel outline colors. One of the features I liked from the city design was making this seamless connection to the main road tile, and I carried that road to disappear into the city, uh, which kind of gave me this idea that the purpose for this world map could be like a stage select map for a racing game. And you could, you know, kind of go through and select these different points along the road to play that particular race. So this one, for instance, you know, might be like a circuit that goes throughout this city, and maybe it's all themed with that architecture and that color palette and stuff like that. And I'm kind of totally picturing this like in the classic Outrun aesthetic. <laughs> so I don't know, that might have to be a follow-up video at some point. Actually, it's kind of funny because in my last video, I was saying how I'm not really a car guy while making a car. And now I'm working on another car theme piece. <laughs> so I don't know, they're just having a moment for me apparently. Uh, but this is one of those times also where I just kind of jumped into a piece without much direction. 
So it is kind of nice to discover a purpose along the way and just kind of follow up on that idea. By the way, if you're curious about the versatility of this program for making pixel art, it is a pretty simple and straightforward interface to use. Uh, I mean, I did have a bit of an adjustment period, but that's just because all of the Photoshop shortcuts are burned in my brain, uh, and the ones in here are slightly different, uh, but it wasn't actually that far off. And actually, the Magic Wand Selection tool in this program was particularly awesome to use uh, because you can actually toggle it to only select stuff within a tile. And on top of that, you can also toggle whether it selects contiguous pixels or not. So between combining those two, there's a good amount of fine tuning when editing specific tile designs that way. Also, when you do edit a tile, it'll update all instances of that same tile in real time, uh, which is obviously really nice for just immediately getting to see the effect of your changes across the entire map design. One of the areas I found it to be a bit lacking though was with the animation. Uh, so you can see at the bottom there's an animation and frame edit tool. And it works well for creating kind of an isolated sprite sheet for an individual object. Like let's say it's a character animation or a pickup in a game. Uh, but I couldn't find a way to create an animated tile and then place that animated tile within a larger design. Uh, which is kind of too bad because it'd really be a neat way to add some life into a map design or something. But I guess that's not really the intent with it. So this program is $9 US, and I think there's a free version of an older build also. Uh, but overall, you know, it's a pretty light purchase. Uh, it's kind of hard to say that, you know, it'd work as a one-stop shop for everything you'll need out of the pixel art program, especially when something like Aceprite is only a little bit more. Uh, but for me, at least, it's been a fun kind of novelty program to dip into for something different. And I do just kind of like seeing how different developers tackle functions and interfaces in these kind of niche pixel art programs. All right, so at this point, I've got all my assets designed and I'm ready to draw out my world map. So I wiped the canvas area clear and started by blocking out the area for the map. I didn't want it to go right to the edge, so I put a black trim around the whole thing first, uh, just so I could go in and add a border to it later. After that, I started painting in some tiles for just a very basic structure of the grass and water areas, and then the path of the roadway that'll go across the entire map. I had some deserty tile designs, so I started shaping the right side of the map as these islands that are off from the main coast. And that way it would also serve as a different aesthetic location for a different level in this game. The thing that's a bit tedious with the tiling is that you can only do one tile design at a time, uh, rather than you know selecting groups of tiles to place down together. So you'll continually see me going back and forth to the tile bank and the canvas. And, you know, sometimes you can plan ahead, like, oh, maybe I'll go through and drop all the top right corners of this specific design and leave enough room and double back to fill in the rest. Uh, but, you know, a lot of the design choices can vary as you go along, so it's definitely a lot of back and forth with that one. Also, there's this black bar that shows the name of the tile uh, kind of underneath your cursor that gets in the way of seeing what's below the cursor. And it's sort of usually relevant to see that space because you're trying to place a tile there. So that's kind of another thing to watch out for. After like a solid 20 or 30 minutes of working my way through this initial placement, uh, this is what I ended up with. And honestly, I was kind of like, oh man, that's it. I, I felt like I designed way more than this. And I realized that the secret here was really to go in and utilize a lot of the changing direction and corner tiles to kind of break up a lot of the monotony, uh, which leads me to the final design which is this. In addition to using more variation and cornering for the land masses, I've added texture tiles throughout the grass and desert areas, and also injected more color throughout, such as the brick red color on the edges of the land, and the patches of darker blue within the water to kind of indicate deeper areas. Oh, and I definitely cheated for the animation here, of course, uh, by bringing this image into Photoshop after, and I overlaid those clouds and just some other simple animated components. Uh, but I really wanted to see it with a bit more life, you know? So let's go ahead and close out with some CRT time. Let me know if there's a particular kind of world map or tile design you'd like to see, because I think I'll have to revisit this idea and workflow again at some point. Uh, but until then, thank you for watching, and take care and keep it square. Mm -hmm.